Hi, uh, Quinbus here, a member of the FreePlane user community out at SourceForge.net. Um, the purpose of this video is just a quick demonstration of a, several little applications I use for note taking. Uh, not to say this is the way to do it, but more in, on the line of sharing uh, ways that I do it. And uh, if other people have ideas they can add to these, uh, then we've created some some basic information for others who are trying to decide how they want to do it. So this is really in the spirit of collaboration rather than instruction. <clears throat> I'm not saying this is a best practice. I'm just simply saying it's the way it has worked well for me. For purposes of this demonstration, I'll be using FreePlane 1.2.20. Note-taking is one of those things that uh, all of us have to do from time to time. <clears throat> it's one of those things that um, I've tried software all over. I've used Word, I've used paper and pencil, I've used uh, Macintosh applications, I've used uh, Unix applications, uh, and I've, I've tried different approaches and never was able to find something that would work well over the long term. Meetings are the first part of a process by which things get done. And oftentimes uh, it's one of those areas where we may take great notes, for example, but then never have an opportunity to use them again. They go in a book or a binder and sit on somebody's shelf and you don't even look at them again. Or um, information is lost that was uh, shared in a meeting and you don't really benefit from having gone because you forgot information that was given to you and you don't have any way to incorporate it in your day-to-day -day work. These are the areas that Freeplane, uh, as a as a sole note-taking source, has solved for me. Um, I can't, I I just can't say it enough. I've tried other things that just don't work very well, and for me, this is working beautifully. Uh, what I do, as you can tell here, for a major major part of you know, this is a major consulting job I do <clears throat> for a group in Asia. I have a set of notes here that I keep by quarter and that's just to keep the map from getting too cluttered as you can see if I had all of them open it would be quite large but but you see here this is an example of uh, meeting minutes. these are meetings with the little men on them <coughs> or the little phone handle or telephone calls or Skype calls um, and you can see that I have captured basic elements about each meeting by date and then underneath that as children are the information when we started and what we talked about when we ended. Uh, you, you have everything at your fingertips now about the meeting itself, when it occurred, uh, in context with other meetings, and information that was shared, who was on the call, that kind of thing. Uh, these templates, uh, these, these basic approaches, these basic nodes, you notice all have a uniform look and to me that's important. I mean, I could create a new child note or, uh, of this uh, Asia Area CP coaches every time, but invariably they're going to look different. And so the way I solved that problem was to create a simple script that basically copies from what I call a template folder. Over here are templates. These are blank examples of the different kinds of meetings I have. Uh, this is a phone call. This is a Skype call. Um, that basic has the basic information I want to capture and supplies um, a basic visual look, whether the color of the text or background or whatever. Uh, and I store them in a little node here called templates. And then over here, when I get ready to install one, when I get ready to have a meeting, I have basically a little tiny script here that will go out. I tell it what kind of a what kind of a record this is going to be. It's a, is it a call, a meeting, a single meeting, a telephone, or in, even in this case a Bible text, but let's just say a single meeting and say okay. What it does is appends a new record which is basically copied from over here at the template, puts the current date on it, today is Saturday the 19th, 2013, and provides me with a basic template of the kinds of things I would want to record in the meeting. So there's a place for attendees, and I would just make child nodes underneath these. Let's say this is Bob and Bill and, and Sue and Ralph. We're in this meeting. It would help if I spelled Ralph's name, at least the American way, right? <laughs> so th these would be attendees. I can put in here something that we started at 9 o'clock. 
um, and we end at uh, 3.30. Um, I, I have pre-inserted breaks. If I don't use a break, if the meeting is shorter than a full day, all you have to do is delete those. But you have, you have an, uh, a visual image that's the same across all meetings. And then let's say we've started and we have topics. You know, sometimes th there will be a pre-published uh, uh, agenda, in which case I've received that in email or a hard copy in some way, and I have a folder out of my hard drive, like we all do, that basically is the folder for the date of this meeting and labeled appropriately. But what I can do is create a link to that agenda. Uh, I don't know if I have any examples of that um, handy. Um, don't see one quickly. But basically, because of the superior capabilities within, within uh, Freeplane to create links to documents, it's very easy to put that document out there and then link to it so that with just a simple click, I would have the agenda now available to me anytime. I don't have to go look for it later. Six weeks from now, I want to look at that meeting. I don't have to go back and look for the agenda or any of the materials that were shared in the meeting because they are in a particular folder in the hard drive. But unlike in previous times, I don't have to remember where that folder is. These links then establish for me exactly what I want. Typically, I won't put links in until after the meeting's over. It just it just goes faster. You're too busy with everything else. So I'll just take the materials and put them in a hard drive during the meeting and then later come back and establish the links. But we've we've got a topic here and uh, we have some discussion and we have some debate and we have some ideas, maybe uh, brainstorming. And of course we all know how important speed is in brainstorming and now I can do that right here and I've labeled it as such. Well then out of all this comes a, an agenda item. Uh, let's say a, what I'll call a to-do. A to-do is something that needs to be done and typically those are assigned to someone. So I have another little script here that when I hit F1 on my computer pops up a little to-do, a little uh, assignment uh, type of the node that I'm getting ready to label. Uh, I have several choices here. There's agenda, there's resources, I can mark it private. Whether or not this is a reference to something electronic, like for example an electronic handout, a, a PowerPoint deck that's out there on my hard drive, I can label any of these any way I choose, but I, I'm going to go with to-do, and I'm going to say this is a to-do action item for Ed. This is a list of the people on my team. Um, Ed took the action item. I could, if I want to, uh, say that say there's some guy named Frank that's going to help Ed, and they have a due date. Uh, let's make it the 21st of this year, of this month, this year. When I say OK, you see what happened. The to-do now is colored yellow. All my to-dos look the same. And I have a little power exclamation mark icon that tells me this is a to-do. Um, I'll give you another example of one. Let's say uh, resource. This is someone in the meeting has referenced a book. Uh, they've made some discussion about uh, a book that they've read and they found particularly valuable and they recommend it to the group. And I just want to capture that as a part of my notes. But if I ever publish my notes, I don't need to necessarily include that. I need it to be labeled differently. I pull up that same little capability and this time I put down uh, resource. And let's say it came from Yop. I don't use the due date. Um, but Yop is the one that made the suggestion, so I know who it came from, and I say, okay. You see, it's now a different color. It has a different look. And at first glance, as I go through my list, I can always find resources, either by searching for that particular icon, or, I'll show you in a minute, I have a little program that will go gather them up and pull them all out for a given uh, parent node. Um, so this capability of being able to label things differently and have them immediately colored on the fly, you saw how quickly it was to do that, it doesn't take but a second and I've now captured the basic information. For those of you who are interested in how stuff like that works, I'm going to pull up the properties panel so you can see under calendar and attributes. You come down here and look for the to-do node. You see that I've come up with a, an attribute called type and given it a value of to-do or in the case of resource, it has a type with a value of resource. So that's, that's basically the type of node we're looking at. 
And then we have a complete date, which is, has a value of zero. Not complete, this is a percentage. Has a value of zero. Completed would be a date string. And then the due date, and who it's assigned to. Names separated by spaces. That gives me all the information in a to-do to know what I need to know about who's responsible for this, this uh, assignment. Um, this also is used to trigger a conditional style. This, there's a conditional style out on, there's a style out on my user-defined styles that looks like this, yellow with a back, with yellow background with a little exclamation icon. And when I've set up a conditional trigger that says anytime you find a node that has a value of a type of to-do and a complete of zero, or let's say less than a hundred, then make it yellow. Now notice what happens. I'm going to leave this uh, this uh, property panel open so you can see. I have another little program that I use to complete things. That when something is completed, I use this little program that brings up uh, a completion dialog, and I can assign a value just to radio buttons of zero to a hundred. The default is a hundred, and I can put the completion date for this particular node. Let's say it's 0121113. And I could put, uh, you know, a set of notes. Frank submitted report. Now, when I click submit, you see what's happened. I created uh, the complete went to 100. The completed date's now been added, and because these values have changed, I have another conditional uh, style that has picked up on that change and has changed the background from green and has applied a check mark icon and this little circle which shows that it's a hundred percent. If I had for example only checked the 50 percent box there is an icon out there that would only be a half of a circle there would be no check mark and it wouldn't be green it would still be yellow. So it gives you a quick visual look that this is a, uh, this has been completed or it's something in progress uh, and it's a way then with under the wonderful details capability, I've added a set of notes. And so if I was going through a process of 25%, uh, 50%, 75%, each time I would have a s set of status notes there that I've added with each time I pulled up that dialog. And that would let me keep track of any notes about what's been working, what we're having trouble with, or whatever. Um, how it's formatted with text, that's entirely just the way I set it up. You don't, it wouldn't have to be this way. This is just a text string that sub substitutes in between these chevron brackets status colon and puts the information I supplied and closes the chevron. But it could be anything you want. It's just a way for me to track the status of this particular node. So to recap, I have everything I need about this topic it is captured now and it's embedded in this this meeting we are having on Saturday afternoon. Um, all the information is there. I can come back at any point in the future and identify what took place, what topics were discussed, how a particular discussion evolved, and that there was an action item that was that Ed and Frank were responsible for. Uh, it's in context, which is important, and it tells me a lot of information about um, how the meeting went. But say, after the meeting's over, I, I want to establish for myself a report. I need to pull out the to-do items um, or those items that have been completed or a set of resources or whatever. Let's just try that. I've got another little tool that I use um, that lets me pull information based upon its type. So I'm, gonna, I'm going up to the very high level now. I'm going to actually run this up here at this high level and I'm going to ask for a list of a little summary report I haven't done this, so let's see what happens. A little summary report for resources. Now, you see here, I get a, I'm going to delete that because I paused it before. You see, I get a little, a little uh, summary report down here at the bottom. This little node was appended to all the other siblings, uh, labeled as a resource summary because that's what I requested, and it goes and searches that entire crawls the entire map since I was at the high level when I ran it. If I had run it in first quarter, it would have only crawled everything below crawl uh, quarter one. And it provides for me a list 
of all the resources that's come up this year. Um, and it also, you'll notice, has a link. Um, here's a book called How Did That Happen? Well, this doesn't tell me much about it. Uh, it doesn't say anything at all. I don't know where it came from. It, I know it came from that the entire year. But you see this little green link here? What's really cool about this is it's established a link, an internal link, back to the actual reference. So when I click on this, here it is. Now I have, this was back on Wednesday, uh, September the 12th of this last year, and we were working as a team. Jeff shared some information. Jeff, this was a part of sharing a little bit about himself, and in the course of that, he shared two resources. So now I know that Jeff picked, he was the one that suggested this book. I know when it occurred, and I know the context in which it occurred. It was a meeting that we had in Chiang Mai uh, back on Tuesday of September of last year. So you see the power of this, and because this is a summary, I haven't actually pulled the information out of my document. I, at this point, can delete this, this uh, summary note because I had the information is still preserved wherever it was. But before I delete it, I might want to copy it and then paste it, just an actual control C at this high level, copy it and then paste it into, let's say, an email document. And as you, those of you that use FreePaint frequently know, the HTML coding within these nodes works pretty well when you, when you drop it into a Word document or into a uh, email, like Outlook. Um, you're going to get a pretty well ordered uh, bullet point list of all of the things that were in that list. So I could then take that information, copy it into an email, and send it off to the team. And they would have a, a summary of, in this case, of resources that took place over the last year. Um, just to show you how it works, I'll run it again on this one because we still have our test meeting out here. I'll say, run it here, and I want a completed list say OK. Now you see I have a completed item summary that's been appended to my list. When I open it up, because I ran it up here, it's going to be a completed, I mean I ran it here. No, I ran it here. So it's, it's appended to this one. And you'll see that one item has been captured and it was the one that we put in as an illustrative example. Uh, once I if I click on this, it takes me to where it was. There it is. Same thing. And when I'm finished with this, all I have to do is delete it. This was a test, so I'm going to delete this entire meeting. All right. As I said, this isn't necessarily uh, an idea that is represents a best practice, but it does give you an idea of kind of the power of free playing. All of these capabilities of, of attributes and uh, Conditional formats are all wonderful tools, but when you couple them with scripts, you get speed in addition to the sort of context that everybody craves in trying to manage information. So by coupling scripts, conditional styles, and templates is what I'm calling them. That's probably different. There's a different term in free plane. Templates mean something else, but I've called these you know, files that I actually copy over, nodes that I copy over. Those capabilities, now at the touch of my finger, I can make those changes on the fly during a meeting without ever having to stop and fiddle around with details so that I'm still engaged in the meeting, I'm still picking up information, and I'm not lost somewhere trying to order something, or I don't have to go back later and try to remember what I did. So I just think, uh, coupled with the capability of linking to other sources, People, when they start referring to things in meetings that are out on the web, or they share pictures or documents, now they can all be brought into a context so that you know where they came in the meeting and what they related to when you were given them. Otherwise, it's just a stack of papers or a set of electronic files on your hard drive, and you can't remember how they relate to anything. This is the tool that lets you do that, and I love it. I use it all the time. So maybe this will trigger some ideas of your own. I'd love to hear some thoughts and suggestions. and also hear what ideas you've come up with. So uh, feel free. I'm out there on the discussion group. I go by the name of Quinbus. I'll look to talk to you there. Thanks.